You've seen the James Webb Space Telescope photos. Stunning galaxies, glowing nebulas, cosmic cliffs of dust and light. But what if I told you James Webb doesn't actually send back photos like this? Instead, it sends back photos that look more like this. And you may have seen these black and white images too. But what you might not know is even these photos have some processing done to them. So what do the actual raw untouched photos from James Webb look like? In this video, I'm gonna show you how we go from an image like this to one that looks like this. Along the way, we'll look at a bunch of raw versions of famous James Webb images. And we'll answer some questions like, what are these images showing us? And are these photos even real? Because once you understand how this telescope really works, you'll never look at another space photo the same way again. To really understand these raw photos, we have to know what makes it different from any other telescope we've ever made. First, a quick shout out to our sponsor. As an astrophotographer, I travel to some really remote places in the world to capture the stars. But when I'm on the road, I still need access to a secure internet connection. And I can do that thanks to Private Internet Access, the sponsor of today's video. Private Internet Access is a VPN, which means it protects your data by encrypting your connection. This is perfect if you're traveling to dark skies and you need to connect to a public Wi-Fi like at an airport or a hotel. It hides your IP address and shields your online activity, sensitive information, and even your passwords from hackers who could be on the same Wi-Fi network. Network. Plus, it allows you to access content that might not be available in the country you're in. Just like how city lights block your view of the stars, local restrictions block access to content. Services like Netflix have different shows and movies available depending on what country you're in. For me, I've been watching the show Landman on Paramount Plus, but if I'm doing astro traveling overseas in New Zealand, I can't get access to my account. But with private internet access, I can simply switch my geolocation and boom, I can get back to watching. It works on all of your devices. And right now, if you go to piavpn.com slash Astro, you can get 83% off, which is just $2.03 a month. Plus you get four extra months free. And if you're not sure, it's risk-free because they give you a 30 day money back guarantee. The Hubble Space Telescope changed the way we see the universe. It gave us iconic images and revealed galaxies we never knew existed. But it was only designed to see things in visible light, the kind that our eyes can see. The problem was that the universe is filled with gas and dust that blocks our view. We needed a way to see through it all. That's why even before Hubble was launched in 1990, NASA was already thinking about building a telescope that reveals this hidden universe a universe in infrared light. Infrared can pierce through dust, reveal hidden stars, and see galaxies from the dawn of time. And so 25 years after it first was proposed, James Webb was launched into orbit. But here's the thing. Even though James Webb is designed to see even deeper than Hubble could, it doesn't work like a normal camera. It sees in infrared, light that's completely invisible to us. So instead of red, green, and blue, JWST collects data through filters, which don't correspond to any colors your eyes can see. So every James Webb image is built from scratch, translated from invisible light we can't see into ones we can. But that raises a lot of questions and rings a lot of alarm bells for people. And this question always comes up, which is, if we can't see it, is it even real? Well, let's use an example. When you use your face ID to unlock your phone in the dark, you don't see anything unusual, right? But something cool is actually happening here that I don't think most people realize. Right here, I've got two cameras, my Sony camera and this night vision camera, which can see in the infrared. From the regular camera, we don't see anything unusual, just a normal unlock of my phone. But with the night vision camera, you can see a flood of infrared light that lights up my face. So we just can't see it until we use the right tool. That's why when James Webb sends back images, it's not showing us something that's fake or making up fake data. It's showing us what's really there, just beyond what our little eye holes can detect. So what does a raw, untouched James Webb photo actually look like? Take the pillars of creation. This is one of the images used to create that colorful end result we saw. But as I mentioned, even this black and white photo has had processing done to it. It's not truly raw. How about a photo it took of the Horsehead Nebula? Now, the Horsehead Nebula is a famous region in space. For context, here's a photo I took, which is a pretty wide field view of the region. But James Webb zooms in insanely close to this region right here. So what does the raw version of it look like? Well, it looks like this. Totally underwhelming, right? It's like the data didn't even come through at all. 
That's because JWST captures raw light, not a photo. It records tiny differences in brightness across its detectors and stores them as numbers. But those numbers are trapped in a very narrow range. So narrow that my computer has a hard time displaying it. So to reveal the image, we have to stretch it. Now watch what happens when we stretch the exact same data. Suddenly structure appears, the nebula takes shape. I didn't add anything, I'm just pulling out the details that's hidden in the raw data. You can even see this process from a normal camera. Here's a photo I took while I was in Goblin Valley. It looks completely black. But after I stretch it, which is taking the data and spreading it across pixel values my computer can display, you can suddenly make out the landscape. It's noisy, but it's real. This is the exact same thing happening with the James Webb images. Now, here's the thing. This image might look raw, it's black and white, but it's still not completely raw. It's already been cleaned up and calibrated. So what does that mean? Well, I'm sure you wanna see what the raw untouched photo looks like first. So let me show that to you and then we can talk about calibration. This is what James Webb really sends back. Raw unprocessed data straight from the telescope. It literally looks like there's nothing there. And this is why we need to talk about calibration. But first, you may be wondering why this calibrated image has this gap in the middle, making it look like a window, but the true raw version doesn't. Well, that's due to the sensor design of this camera. It's actually four sensors put together. And this raw image is from this section of the sensor. But before scientists can even begin to see what's there, they need to clean it up. Let me show you what some of that looks like. When I bring a James Webb image into my astronomy software, I also get to see all of the calibration data used to clean up this photo. Things like noise maps, weight maps, and tons more. Let's look at one as an example. This one is the flat field correction. Now, every camera sensor, even ones on a $10 billion space telescope, has imperfections. Some pixels are more sensitive than others, and the optical system doesn't distribute the light evenly across the field of view. So it uses a flat field correction. Essentially, it takes an image of uniform illumination. Now, James Webb does this by using a built-in calibration lamp. It helps figure out which pixels are too bright or too dark, and it fixes it. Here we can see this weird band of light around the edge of the flat frame, and you can see it in the raw image too, and it gets fixed when we apply the flat frame. There are tons of other calibration processes involved, which you can read about online, but when they're all applied, it ensures that what we're looking at is actually from space. So after we calibrate all parts of the image, we end up with our four panel photo. To fill in these gaps, it takes a mosaic of photos and stitches them together, giving us these black and white images that make up the images we see online. So now you've seen what one raw photo from James Webb looks like, you know, full of that messy detail. But what do other photos look like? What do the other raw images look like? Well, I wondered that too. And these images I'm about to show you, I have never seen before this video. So let's take a look at them and see what's going on. Now, moving forward, I'm just gonna show you what the calibrated raw photos look like, since, you know, there's not much to look at in the uncalibrated images. Let's start with one of the first images we saw from James Webb, the Webb Deep Field, a glowing swirl of galaxies. But the raw version, it looks like this. What's cool is you can see all of the star spikes, all of the tons of galaxies in there. I also found something cool when looking at these calibrated frames. This frame here shows you how they mosaic this image together. Now, I was wondering why there are two panels here. Well, JWST actually has two sets of camera sensors. What I love is that you can still see the lensing effects that's happening here. Those strange galaxies that look like they're being warped and smeared, they don't actually look like that. It's a phenomenon predicted by Einstein a century ago called gravitational lensing. Many of these smeared galaxies are actually the same exact galaxy. Their light is just distorted and bent from that bright galaxy right in the middle. Prime evidence for the existence of the mysterious dark matter. Next, let's look at the Southern Ring Nebula, located in the constellation Vela. But this time, we'll look at images from two separate cameras that are on James Webb, the near-infrared camera and the mid-infrared camera. Now, the near-infrared camera captures shorter infrared wavelengths. So in this raw image of the Southern Ring Nebula, we see structure, rings, shells, a bright central star in the middle. But when we look at the same object with the mid-infrared camera, everything shifts. All of those brighter, hotter outer regions we saw disappear, and what's left is the cooler dust and gas that's glowing, hidden from our initial view because it was blocked by that brighter, hotter dust. 
At the center, the star isn't as big and bright as it was in the near-infrared, and we even lose those diffraction spikes that we saw in the near-infrared image. Now, it's not just beautiful galaxies and distant nebula that James Webb has been photographing. It's also been shooting things that are really close to us, like really close to us. Things like planets, things like Uranus. <laughs> I'm sorry, can't help myself. I still have to giggle like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a kid, I'm sorry. Some people say Uranus, but come on, you gotta say the name. The name is Uranus and you just gotta own it. It's Uranus, Uranus. Okay, all right, let's look at these. Let's look at these raw images from Uranus. Let's take a peek. For me, this is one of the coolest photos JWST has taken. Probably because Uranus gets made fun of a lot because of the name, but it's actually a really cool planet. And you can see all these background galaxies in the image. Now, when we look at the raw, unstretched photo, you can already see the planet and some detail around it and the ring, where in other raw, unstretched photos, you can't really see much. But once we stretch the image, all of a sudden, all of those background galaxies start to pop out. And there's something about these raw images that just make it feel that much more real, even if it is in light and wavelengths that we can't see with our eyes. These raw images may not look like much, but one thing is certain. The James Webb Space Telescope is one of the greatest achievements in human history, and I truly believe that. All of the technology that's on there right now was invented by solving problems we never had solutions to before. And when you do that, you revolutionize technologies back here on Earth, and that's how we benefit from things like this. Advancements in medical tech, photography, material science, the list goes on and on and on. But most importantly, this telescope, it changes the way that we view ourselves in the universe. And that's a beautiful thing.